Welcome into the Michigan Football Report here on a Wednesday Wisconsin game week and someone's put the news out there so we're going to kind of tell you what the word is on Zach Charbonnet. If you remember last Friday I alluded to a, a source saying that he wouldn't have heard about a big injury on you know, this injury news unless it was big. I've heard a couple different things, thought Charbonnet was the one but didn't have too great of a scoop on it to put it out there but an ohio state writer for rivals.com has just tweeted uh just moments before we were getting ready to film this show that he is hearing zach charbonnet has to get knee surgery to clean up some damage from the injury he had that forced him to miss spring ball and here is the tweet here from kyle lamb who works for rivals.com does a couple podcasts different things like that basically saying that what he's heard is that charbonnet is being scoped from unfinished work uh, that he had in the operation he got in the spring, which is kind of a lingering, lingering injury from his senior year in high school, expecting him to be out a few weeks. And um, and it sounds like this is, uh, you know, from at least this, this guy could be one of the great troll jobs, but it does support a lot of what we've been told over the last four or five days that, that Michigan had a significant injury in the offensive side of the ball. Some were trying to speculate that it was Jalen Mayfield. I think that's been kind of debunked that Mayfield was not uh, injured at all. But, uh, but, but Lamb seems to want to say that it's Charbonnet. I have heard nothing to discredit this, and we'll keep digging in over the next few days. So make sure to follow you see in the bottom of the screen on Instagram. With something this serious of nature, I'm going to try and get out news as it happens. So follow us on Instagram, at Michigan Football Report. Now, Zach Charbonnet... Uh, you know, certainly uh, got the workload against Army two weeks back, and is that where this injury came from? Did Jim Harbaugh overwork him? Did Zach, did, did, did Josh Gash overwork a true freshman? 72 snaps, only 12 for Christian Turner. Uh, you know, some said Turner went out with an injury. Others said he was benched because he missed a block on one of those Shea Patterson fumbles. Didn't see any true Wilson after being injured in the first week against Middle Tennessee State. So if you believe the Michigan uh, – you know, official word, all three running backs may be injured, Turner, Wilson, and Charbonnet. Ben Van Sumeren only saw, you know, one snap. He's, he's had his own fumbling issues as well. But 33 carries for Zach Charbonnet against Army as a true freshman in his second game of his Michigan football career, in his second game of his college football career. And I said it on our post-game grades, way too much, Harba, way too much. And if this report turns out to be accurate, which frankly, I have nothing to discredit it at this point, then uh, then I think there's certainly something to be said. I didn't want to put it out there because of the just nature of uncertainty. I wasn't anywhere near a four Harbaugh heads when we heard it last week, but if you follow me on Twitter, please do, because I'm pretty awesome at it. What? Who said that? Um, you would. I'm trying to put out hints there just so, uh, just so everyone stays informed, the folks that do follow me. So this is the tweet I put out on Sunday as I was able to talk to some more of my sources. Hopefully you guys can read between the lines a little bit. There's a reason I put this one out there. Michigan can at least afford injuries to the following, and you see the top of the list there, Zach Charbonnet. So for those of you that, uh, you know, the haters and losers, of which there are many, who keep watching the show, like, welcome to the big leagues, baby. This isn't Sam Webster putting out uh, that uh, Dwum for is, is, is fully healthy last week when he wasn't even going to play at all. So that is the situation. Report from an Ohio State Rivals writer confirming some of the information that we've heard over the past four or five days that Zach that a significant injury in the offensive side of the ball. Zach Charbonnet was what potentially we thought it was. Now getting further word from those outside the program that aren't afraid of, uh, of the Michigan uh, media mafia that it's Zach Charbonnet. So we'll keep going on the story throughout the next several days as we lead up to Michigan at Wisconsin, high noon on Saturday. I want to ask you guys this question. Can Michigan beat you know, Wisconsin without Zach Charbonnet? Jim Harbaugh, 0-5 on the road against top 15 teams. Um, Michigan hasn't won at Wisconsin since 2001. Jim Harbaugh, 0-9, I guess 1-9 against top 10 teams. Wisconsin's not a top 10 team. But nevertheless, the fact remains that if Zach Charbonnet is indeed out, which we're going to keep digging, but why don't you bring you guys the report that's out there because no one else will address it until they're given permission. No one else who covers Michigan, at least. Will Michigan... Can they beat Wisconsin without Zach Charbonnet? Type M if yes for Michigan that they can. Not as big as loss as uh, it may seem. Or W, you know, the Wisconsin if it's no. So M if Michigan wins without Charbonnet if they can win. 
Uh, w, if it is a lost cause, no, might as well just uh, not even make the trip. Answer below. We'll keep things rolling on this Michigan football injury update. Guys, I mentioned the Instagram uh, account, at Michigan Football Report. Got it back on private because this is one of those situations that I want to give you guys some information where I know, but I don't need uh, MGO blog and all these bums and haters and losers out there uh, compl- you know, trying to screenshot me to, for a gotcha moment if I miss one single detail of there. You heard my phone just go off. Let me, excuse me, confirmed. Okay, cool. Got some information. We're going to go over this show. So nevertheless, good thing we got the word there. Phone ringing in. This this phone contains more information about Michigan football than, than anyone wants to know. But serious note, want to go through the Michigan football injuries, tell you where we're at leading into this Wisconsin game. Shea Patterson. Now, I don't know why Michigan forces their players to lie to the media because that's what it seems like Michigan does every single week, players and assistant coaches. Maybe it's a Jim Harbaugh thing. Maybe it's somebody else. I'm not sure. But when, you know, uh, Sean Newer, the new defensive line coach last week, says he expects Michael Drumford to play against Army when that was a bold-faced lie. Now, Shea Patterson saying he's 100% against uh, going into this Wisconsin game, which I can tell you he is not 100%. I, they, you know, they ask, Shea, are you going to play? How are you feeling? Feeling good. Uh, can you say you're 100%? I think that's fair. Oh, I'm sorry. This is actually a quote. Uh, is the injury, uh, he asked me he's 100%. Did that injury, you know, slow you down uh, against, uh, against the first two games? I think it's fair to say I did get banged up, blah, blah, blah. And then he says, I'm ready to go 100%. That's asking him, you know, they asked him specifically, are you 100%? So I'm going to give this one. If we're doing the Harbaugh head scale, it's a fake news. He's not 100%. You still have a quarterback who is limited in his ability to run the ball. We saw the the you know the results of that or what that causes, not pulling on some of those read options against Army. And you're still going to see that, plus the inability to make all the throws, especially to the sidelines, especially potentially deep. So if I was Josh Gaddis, and, you know, Josh, we're boys now. You know what's up. Um you got to give more drag routes over the middle. You got to get more, you know, uh, 10 to 15 yards, speed and space, and not go uh, short or or deep pass or, or bust. So Michigan's got to give Shea the opportunity over the middle with a guy running and not trying to throw uh, these long outs or these deep passes that Shea uh, hasn't been great at regardless in his career, but certainly with an you know, 80% with this abdominal injury still straining him uh, to, uh, to, to continue to make. So Shea Patterson, you're an 80% uh, on, uh, on you know, going into this kinds of game on where his injury is at. Now, let's keep rolling through the, uh, the Michigan uh, injury report. But before we do, we saw Shea Patterson fumble quite a few times. And I am giving out a Michigan football no turnover chain to any of the offensive skill position players who do not turn the ball over, especially Zach Charbonnet out. We definitely need ball security. So if you want a no turnover chain, Shea Patterson, if you want one, Ben Van Sumren, Tariq Black, Lavert Hill on those punt returns, don't turn the ball over against Wisconsin because with Zach Charbonnet likely out, Michigan cannot afford it at all. So this thing is taking over the internet, the no turnover chain. I'm giving one away to every offensive skill position player who does not fumble the ball or gets thrown an interception against Wisconsin. Let's take a look at John Runyon Jr., a.k.a. Lil John. 90%. 90%. He has not played so far in two games this season. Uh, Ryan Hayes, the redshirt freshman, got the start at left tackle in, uh, in, the, in the opener, got the start against uh, Army and played all 80 snaps. But running junior, expect him to play near full health against Wisconsin. Here's that depth chart will look like. Running back at left tackle, Ben Bredesen, Cesar Ruiz, Michael and Wayne, you four guys that uh, need no introduction, starters from last year. Jalen Mayfield will remain at right tackle, but you see Ryan Hayes moving back to back, you know, backup role. We'll be backing up Mayfield and, and John Runyon Jr. But you see that Jalen Mayfield. He was the guy a lot of the blog boys wanted to speculate uh, uh, on my injury report. They want to speculate that it was Jalen Mayfield. You know for a fact that Mayfield was never uh, in play to be the injured uh, player from a very close source to to the Mayfield family. And so that speculation from others was wrong. But he may have tweaked something. He may have got knocked down. But nevertheless, Jalen Mayfield fully expecting to play. Unless something happens on practice on Thursday or today on Wednesday, uh, something always could happen. But as of now, Mayfield ready to go. Nothing serious, nothing that was going to threaten him from not playing all along. You see the offensive line snap count. They relied on Ryan Hayes big time. They didn't even rotate anyone else there in there. The offensive uh, line, the entire offensive line, 
played the entire game against Wisconsin. No sub or against Army. No subs were made. Were, were uh, substitutions were made. So if Mayfield running running was was out potentially, you've got Hayes has got a lot of play over the first two games. So they've got some more depth than they would have had had running been uh, uh, healthy the first few games of the year. But nevertheless, I expect Hayes to take a backup role. Mayfield to be uh, the starter, continue right tackle, and John Ronan Jr. there at left tackle. Predict the score, guys. Michigan dropping the polls yet again. Media bias. Um, big time media bias against Michigan right now. Number 11, playing on the road at number 13, Wisconsin. Despite what Braylon Edwards tells you, Michigan has not won there since 2001, loses a four straight games. You know, they take big gaps of uh, years without playing Wisconsin, so that's why I can go back almost two decades without a win there, especially with a four game losing streak. So predict the score below in the comments. And if you want to win 25 bucks, we're trying to make sure we don't miss anybody who predicts it correctly. Email goblue at chatsports.com to qualify. You email the score prediction. You got to say the winner. So don't say, you know, 21, 24, 24, 21, and expect uh, to get it right if, if, if you don't say the team. So email us there. We'll bring you 25 to the first person. So do it now who emails us the correct score. And guys, if you're going to be predicting scores, if you're good at predicting scores, check out our friends at the Action Network. Have you seen my Twitter picks? I've been putting them out there for all four weeks, including week zero of college football. In the first couple weeks of the NFL, the mornings of the game, telling you who I'm betting. And let me tell you what, I do it because of the Action Network. This isn't one of these, uh, you know, BS ad reads you hear from the others. This is factual stuff. Action Network, I go, they've got statistical analysis, and they tell you where the public's putting their money. They tell you where the, where the, the you know, the, where the bets are going, where the money's going. And I have a system that I want to get you guys in on. If you get going with the Action Network, we got a 40% off exclusive. It's a few bucks a month, guys. It's a few bucks a month. Go to chatsports.com slash deal. If you want the 40% off, chatsports.com slash deal. And if you do, email us, go blue at chatsports.com, and I will send you my picks. And you'll start to figure out my system using the, the Action Network app. I'll send you my picks every Saturday and Sunday morning uh, before, uh, before the game so you can get those in. Winning in a 60 5% rate so far in college football. Check my Twitter. I put them out there. 60% rate on NFL. So if you want to be in the money big time, do it with the Action Network. It's the only app I use. It's basically made my picks for two years. And just say, what's up? Okay, keep it rolling. Donovan Peoples-Jones, will he be in the lineup against Wisconsin this, uh, this week? Peoples-Jones has missed two games. Missed the first two games of the opener. Missed all of spring ball. Will he be back? I'm putting it at 50-50 at this point, guys. I'm putting it as question mark. Who the heck knows? I'm not going to make a prediction on this one because even uh, Dr. Jones um, in, in the YouTube comments, Donovan Peoples Jones' dad has said for a month, hey, DPJ is good to go. And then, you know, no slight to him, but I think DPJ thought he was good to go. And now uh, you get to game time. You get to game week. You start going 100%, 90% in practice. You tweak something. Rumors out there of a high ankle sprain. There's some other injury rumors that have been lingering. But I don't know what to expect from DPJ. Uh, coming out of, you know, into last weekend, I thought he would play. And now as you get into some more heavy practices into this, you know, out of bye week into game week, not so, sh so sure. So I'll try and keep diving on this one, keep digging in. But nevertheless... Donna Peoples-Jones, I'm giving just a, the, the three question marks. That's all I'm giving it against Wisconsin because we won't know probably until Friday at the absolute earliest. And with that being said, with Zach Charbonnet potentially out per reports and per my kind of injury tease a little bit, whatever you want to call it last week, Donna Peoples-Jones still unknown. Will we finally see speed and space against Wisconsin, an offensive concept that maybe Michigan's only – uh, implemented for a quarter and a half in the first half against Middle Tennessee State. So why for yes, Gas has got two games under his belt. He knows what he's doing. An N for no. Will we finally see speed and space because without Charbonnet potentially and without Donovan Peoples-Jones potentially, I fear that Michigan could not even score 10 points in this game. So we'll see what happens. But this is a top 15 battle in Wisconsin. Michigan at Wisconsin. Uh, at Camp Randall, it's on Fox. Uh, Charles Woodson making his debut on their pregame show on Saturday, so uh, check that out if you're a Woodson fan like myself. Wisconsin is now a three and a half point favorite. They've won four straight in Madison. The over-under, where was the over-under? Did we have that on there? Was it 44, something like that? Whatever it is, Michigan's a three and a half point favorite. 
43 is the over under. Um, opened at 51.5, now it's dropped to 43. That's pretty big, that's pretty interesting. The stats and research department all over that one. So this is the over under in the game. Michigan has not been a good team. 19 of 20 games as a underdog, they have lost the game outright going you know, back, you know, the last time they won a game as an underdog, as a program, a betting underdog, 2013 against Notre Dame. So get your predictions in. Make sure you email goblue at chatsports.com. That's the word on Michigan, Wisconsin. The betting lines, the over-under, and if you're going to put money on it, we'll talk about where we do it in a little bit, but make sure you go to the Action Network. Download their app, chatsports.com slash deal. How about Michael Dwumfor, Michigan's defensive lineman? Played one snap against Middle Tennessee State. Haven't seen him since. I'm giving him a doubt it. And I don't think we're going to see Dwum for for quite a while. I wouldn't expect him back till midseason at the earliest. Some speculation that he may not return at all this year. I don't want to go that far myself. But there is rumors out there, rumblings out there, that that could be the case for Michael Dwum for. So I don't expect Dwum for to be in there. And if he's not in there, big loss for Michigan. Again, you had to play the same three defensive linemen in a 3-4-4, 3-4-5, whatever the state is, 3-4-4 set against Army to take, you know, to to, to take the the wide pitches away from the Army triple option. But don't expect 1-4 to come back. He's been at Michigan for uh, for a few, you know, a number of years. It's 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 concerning that Jim Harbaugh said this in the spring that 1-4 and Peoples Jones might be out for an extended period of time. And everyone said, oh, Harbaugh's a son of a gun, whatever, whatever. And neither of those guys has played really this entire year. So I think Jim Harbaugh may have not, for once, been kind of misleading on uh, the status of some players when he said those guys may be out the entire season back in the spring. Guys, bet DSI is the place to bet all your college football and NFL games. You can get some scoop on Action Network. Go to bet DSI, take their cash, chatsports.com slash bet. Make sure that you get that promo code GOBLUE when you make your first deposit. It will give you a 120% deposit bonus. So you put in 100 to start, an extra 120. You're at 220. You put in 200, 300, 120% deposit bonus up to 500 bucks. You get 600 for free to bet on games. Simple formula. Use BetDSI to bet. Use Action, Net- use Action Network to know what's going on. To have informed betting, use BetDSI to win money. Make sure you double your money, 120% actually. With BetDSI, BetSports.com slash bet. Promo code is GOBLUE. Next up is Josh Ross, Michigan's uh, junior starting linebacker. Went out mid-game-ish against Army and didn't come back from for, for the rest of the game. Had some really great stats before he went out, but nevertheless was injured. I'm told he is back to near 100% health. It was, a, it was a short-term injury and that Josh Ross will play against Wisconsin. Desperately need him to play if you're going to shut down uh, Jonathan Taylor. Great stats for him for you know around a half or so of play. Second on the team in tackles and only playing uh, you know a half, or I guess third on the team, I'm sorry, behind Jordan Glasgow. The linebackers got a lot of action winning a three defensive lineman set and, uh, and kind of hoping that Army tries to string it out and get Ross, Hudson, Glasgow out there on the edge to stop the Army triple option attack. All right, follow us on YouTube if you haven't yet. YouTube.com slash Michigan TV is where we put all of our content. You won't be the last to know if you're relying on the competition, who's going to play, what's going on with Michigan football. Every single video is on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Michigan TV. Hit that subscribe button. We're getting close to 5,000 subscribers. Let's keep it rolling through this Michigan football injury update. If you want some more information or if somehow you skip through it at the beginning, Zach Charbonnet, there's a report out from an Ohio State writer for Rivals.com named Kyle Lamb that Charbonnet has to go in for more surgery. You know, we, we kind of teased this, put this out there. I didn't have a, a super solid source on it a little while back, a week or so, five days ago or so. Charbonnet now reportedly will not play against Wisconsin on Saturday. So what does that mean for the Michigan running attack? Christian Turner missed a block on, on, a, on a blitzer from the outside, Shea Patterson's uh, blind side. Shea didn't see it. He fumbled, Michigan lost the ball, and I'm not sure, actually, I don't think we saw Turner again. Uh, I was in the in the stadium, so I'm not 100% sure. I don't think we saw Turner after that. Some said, oh, he was hurt. May have just been benched because they gave Zach Charbonnet all, all the play, you know, all the snaps after that. 90% likelihood that Christian Turner will play this week. Um, 
against against Wisconsin. I am still skeptical whether he was injured or not, but 90% is where I'm hearing he's at right now is overall health. What about True Wilson? Injured versus Middle Tennessee State? He is the starter apparently over the summer, according to Jim Harbaugh at Big Ten Media Days, but I'm just giving him a question mark. Conflicting sources, conflicting reports even out there that Wilson would miss this game. Some said he's good to go, missed the Army game after getting hurt against Middle Tennessee State in the opener. So if Charbonnet is indeed out against Wisconsin, I believe this is what your depth chart will look like. I don't have enough, um, I guess, I don't have enough feel on where True Wilson is going to be at health-wise. So I think Ben Van Summeren will be the backup running back uh, to, to Christian Turner with no Zach Charbonnet. But you see there in that second line below Van Summeren, kind of our notes on this position, it might just be Shea Patterson and Dylan McCaffrey. You might see some of that offense you saw against Middle Tennessee State where you just have uh, McCaffrey rolling out and taking off and running the ball. You might see two quarterbacks on the field do a lot of you know intriguing things, but the running game is not going to be a strength without Charbonnet. Christian Turner didn't play for almost three quarters or so against Army. Ben Van Summeren has only got a handful of carries in his entire career, fumbled, and I think two of them. There was a maybe a snap exchange, but definitely fumbled and lost one uh, uh, last week. So this this is a concerning uh, game. This is certainly not where you want to be at Michigan, losing two potential starting offensive linemen early in the year in Runyon and Andrew Stuber, and now potentially your only running back with the pulse, Zach Charbonnet, reportedly beginning knee surgery, could miss three to six weeks, just depending on uh, on how that recovery goes. Michigan, Wisconsin, Saturday noon, Michigan is a three and a half point underdog. Have Jim Harbaugh, uh, was they say six, six games he's been in Michigan as an underdog, has lost all six. So if Michigan's going to win this game, they may have to do it without Zach Charbonnet and certainly will have to overcome the awful trends of odds that Michigan's had under Jim Harbaugh and Pryor when going up as an underdog. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching the Michigan Football Report. As we're getting ready for the Wisconsin game, I've got some more fish Michigan football news here. Our grades and highlights versus Army. And if you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button. Subscribe to the channel so you never miss a video. Go Blue.